world, going from Floyd Fest to the works of Ben Lovett now on what it is. This is one of the videos that we've been looking forward to showcasing kind of on the other end of the spectrum, mm -hmm. kind of on the on the, the very hard to produce, tons of effort. Yeah. Uh, you, you had to travel to LA, or mm -hmm. is that right, mm -hmm. to make this? Mm -hmm. And spend a whole day shooting it. But, and uh, then a year finishing it. To, to tell us a little bit about Eye of the Storm. Um, Eye of the Storm was the uh, first video that we created from, um, I have a record called Highway Collection. And I have a background in doing music for film, and I was looking for a way to sort of cross-pollinate those two groups of people and relationships that I had. And um, um, when I started playing the record for people I knew and friends, uh, just a handful of directors and people I'd worked with in the past came forward, and particularly Chris Allender in the case of Eye of the Storm, and said, hey, we have to make something for this song. And um, that's kind of the way that started and that's the way they all sort of started and then I found myself trying to make one for every song on the record which is what I've been doing since the record came out and we did Eye of the Storm like you said we shot it in one really really long day on a on a blue screen and then it took a year with animators spread all around the world working on this thing to get it to finally we shot in January of one year and released it the first week of February the following year wow. and uh you can sort of see why when you watch it. It's a mix of live action and CG animation. So what you see is me uh, and everything I'm interacting with with my hands it was, is actually there. So there's, there's a combination of props that I'm actually using and then um, other things that are being you know, composited around me. And when you find this on YouTube, there's a link in the notes which takes you to the making. The making of, of yes, yeah. which, oh. which is really interesting. And they did a really great job. They distilled all of that process that I just talked about into like three minutes of really quick moving, really interesting. This is how this came to be. And um, I, you know, these days I feel like because of what you guys have all mentioned, because everybody kind of has the means to the tools to build these sort of things for themselves. If people are as interested in how did you make mm -hmm. that as they are because we're so inundated with amazing imagery like you can flip channels on tv for five minutes and just see stuff that blows your mind just watching commercials and so we're, we're beginning to expect that level of like astounding imagery and you're really curious on a level like us where this whole thing was made without any budget this was like this was like a lot of people trying to like rally a group of artists and inspire them to challenge them to make something without all the means of the to do it the easy way or, or whatever and so to find out how did you manage to do that I think is an, is also a new medium where those two worlds overlap definitely sort of the same thing we're doing right now right now right <laughs> <laughs> let's go ahead and show a little bit of eye of the storm and so you you'll see um, these are like, they're real clouds, right? But they're not, these were like um, photos and things that are composited together to create layers of clouds and, and slow moving shots. So that, this is me walking on a treadmill that's painted green so they can uh, map it out against, it was painted blue so they can map it out against the blue screen. And um, So these shots, and you'll see another one soon where I walk across the bow of the ship, you walk in place and they make the background move behind you and it makes it look like you're moving across the, in a shot like that, I'm, it's me and a steering wheel that's there, but everything else is composited in. You can see me on the front of the ship right here, little tiny bin. And to do the, uh, like the scarf blowing in the wind, it's like it's a, it was a combination of practical effects and high-tech CG stuff. So it's literally just a guy off screen with, with fishing line attached to the back of that thing, just tugging it and making it dance around. And you know, in a shot like this, I just have a bunch of stuff that I'm kind of just tossing off screen. Didn't like that book anyway. Didn't like that book anyway. Never learned to play this thing. Uh, just throw it in the fire there. And to get that effect on the goggles, they had to take green tape and, and tape out the eyes on those goggles. So the interesting thing about this like 15, 16 hour day is that I could not ever see anything I was doing. And so that caused a lot of um, pretty... Uh, we, did, we did have one little mishap with the... Uh, with the, so you can see me there, I'm walking on the treadmill, but you know, so many hours of work you'd never know it. 
but I had to do things like this where I would walk to one end of the treadmill, turn, do something, turn around and walk the other way. Well, there was once where the guy hit the wrong direction on the treadmill oh, no. and just threw me into a barricade <laughs> of lights. And that telescope that we got was actually like a prop, like a real vintage old telescope. And that thing was history. That thing went flying about 40 feet and crashed into the wall. And But other than that, it was, you know, we had guys that really knew what they were doing, guys and girls. And um, that was our only little miscue there. It must have been a dream to be able to have the freedom to like really create something as beautiful as this. I mean, this is a really magical video. It still blows my mind when I watch it because I was really excited from the treatment and I was like, how in the world are we gonna do that? But I trusted the director and I knew that he could and I knew they were capable. And I have a really vivid imagination, but this, the way this turned out was so far beyond what you would expect. If you go and you watch that making of, and you see the way I look on that screen, I'm like, I'm covered in different shades of, of fluorescent tape. We used like fluorescent um, duct tape all over the jacket and all over different parts of the goggles. And the reason is, is when you put that stuff on a blue screen, you can key those different colors and, and adjust the levels of those things. So the lining of the coat right there, the way to get in the lining on the, on the little hat, the way to get all that stuff to stand out. And so I look pretty ridiculous. Like I look like I'm on an audition to be on like Tron or something. Yeah. It's like everything's like neon and real crazy. And you know, to, to have seen what it took to get it this far. Um, and you know, when something takes a year in post-production, there are many times when you're, when you say to yourself, this thing's never going to get done. Imagine. Not the least of which was the fact that we were going to put a dragon in this thing. And I was just like, man, <laughs> The odds of, of us getting a dragon in this thing that actually looks cool is so slim, and I love it. That's my little dude. It turned out really cool, and you, you know. I think a lot of it is like Caitlin said earlier, you kind of just have to get people, and in this case, um, it was me as, as the artist in this situation, having to just trust the vision of the person I was collaborating with and working with to create something like this, that it would actually be as epic and grandiose as, as uh, because it was like, well, don't we need money for that? But I've, yeah. I've just never really subscribed to that philosophy in creating art, you know, that there's any real prerequisite other than determination. So is this video ultimately something that you add to your resume or is it something that you can use to market yourself later? Yeah, I just think it's a further extension of what I'm interested in and what I do. It's not really necessarily meant to be... Um, an advertisement for me or the song or anything it's just like a it's more fun than the next best thing we could have done that day you know <laughs> it just seemed like a good enough idea of something to spend time doing and so these um that was the first one we released we've released four of them now um and have shot three of the others so over the course of um this this year and next year all these videos are rolling out and they're all different styles or different directors for each one um like you for people who aren't aware you know the one that came out right after that looks like a like a valentine's day prom party and, you know and then we've got one that's set in the civil war and so they're all over the place yeah and the ghost of old highways mm -hmm. the the short film mm -hmm. yeah ghost of old highways became an actual it we're i'm really interested in in challenging the the perception of what this medium is and is not and what all it can include and so um with ghost of old highways you had a song that inspired a script that then became a short film that we then created new score music for and the you know the song is four minutes long the film's 12 and the song's never in it but it was the basis of inspiration for the whole piece and actually the song's the end credits so I, I'm, I may have the only vi music video where the, the song is the end credits like for the video. Yeah. <laughs> it's like the soundtrack to so many movies where the song is never really in the movie. Never really yeah, in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and so th it, w w but what it gave me an opportunity to do was create new music that was done in the style of and borrowing theme, musical themes and, and stylistic themes from the original song into the original music. And so it, it's kind of like this thing that started and ended with the same idea, but it, it created all this other content getting back around to it. And that film, you know, became, it, it was kind of like, um, it started a life of its own and did film festivals and, um, 
you know, I spent a good portion of last year going around to film festivals and doing Q&As and, and talking about Ghost of Old Highways because it's this period piece made on no budget and there's weapons and, and costumes that were created and, and all sorts of like in-camera old school production tricks that people were really interested in. And that, that's online as well. And there's a really great making of documentary for that as well. You can find all of this at benlovett.com. I think we're starting to run shy on time, so we don't have...